Number 5 of Imagine climbing up the highest mountain in the world and being visually reminded every so often that you might die doing it. Reminded by the dead bodies that came before you and did, in fact, fail at reaching the summit, or at least making it out alive. This is the real deal. Each year, everyone from the most seasoned of mountaineers to those who are taking their first go at the mountain, pays thousands of dollars to climb Everest only to be reminded constantly of their imminent death and often people do die in the attempt. 240 climbers have perished, and many of their bodies color the mountain, their bright winter gear frozen in the ice. The most vividly scary and deadly section is called Rainbow Valley for this very reason. The colorful gear from the dozens of dead bodies of previous climbers. These markers on Everest remind climbers that although the climb doesn't seem terrible, the altitude and potential for storm can be fatal, as it has turned for whole groups in past years. The lack of oxygen and exhaustion that high up can take your life. This place is called the death zone for a reason. Why aren't the bodies removed from the mountains? Because getting up and down the mountain carrying only yourself is strenuous enough. Climbing up and down Everest while carrying another human being will likely leave you yet another victim. And so, the dead remain. Number 4, a fully does the Siberian tundra serve as an indeterminate source of long extinct animals, prehistoric plants, and giant craters. It was also once a storage unit for bodies ravaged by vicious viruses like smallpox. The eradicated disease could find its way back into the mainstream as the permafrost starts to thaw and these once buried bodies are freed. This is what happened 20 years ago when a body was found in the Kolyma River and then transported to the Northeast Research Station in Chersky, Siberia. Whether or not this headless corpse was smallpox ridden, no one would know, and so everyone steered clear of it. The frozen soil could have kept the virus alive and thriving. Many people are frightened at the thought of a smallpox resurgence, particularly local residents, when bodies are recovered or mass graves are exposed in Siberia, and the scientists were frightened too, so frightened that they didn't even care to conduct any research on these aged human remains. The corpse was reburied, despite the fact that one of the researchers estimated the corpse's traditional reindeer skin garb was roughly 300 years old, long before smallpox became such an epidemic. The fear of the potential virus destroyed the possibility of discovering this headless corpse's history. Sad, but perfectly understandable. Number 3, up near the Himalayas lies a glacial lake called Rupkund. It's innocent enough in the coldest months when it's frozen, but when the ice thaws, a stunningly creepy pile of bones is revealed. Human bones. The eerie remains were uncovered in 1942 by a forest guard, who came across Skeleton Lake, as it's been rightly named, and the hundreds of bones that flow within it. The bones were originally thought to be World War II remains of Japanese soldiers. Nope. They were later thought to be the remains of Kashmir General Singh and his men, who were believed to have gotten lost in the upper Himalayas when returning from 1841's Battle of Tibet. Still, nope. They were much, much older than a century or two. National Geographic scientists detected that the skeletons dated back to 850 AD, and that many of the skulls indicate they were struck by tiny pinpricks falling straight down upon them probably hail. In fact, as the local folklore tells it, Kanaja's king, just Tawol, and his men were celebrating in the high mountain when Latu, a deity, massacred the lot of them for disturbing his sleep. Talk about raining on the Kanaja's parade. Now all that remains, frozen in ice, is a pit of death to remind us all to respect the heavens. Number 2 of yet another mummy, known as Utsi the Iceman, was found in the Utsul Alps in 1991. The Iceman dates back to sometime around 3300 BC, making him hella old and hella scary. As the crew removed him from the mountain after two German tourists discovered him, Utsi was a cursed thing. In the 13 years that followed, seven people who were involved in the excavation ended up dead. Four of the deaths were extremely violent, while the other three were natural. The Iceman himself is said to have experienced a violent death. He was speared by an arrow, after which, his skull was bashed in with a rock or some other blunt object. Cursed conspirists suppose that the Iceman wanted to avenge his death in the form of cursing those who would remove his body from its final resting place, and maybe that's true. Let's tally his victims up and decide for ourselves. Death number one was Rainer Hen, the forensic pathologist who placed the remains of Utsi in a body bag. He died in a terrible car crash on the way to a world conference to discuss Utsi in 1992. Death number two was Kurt Fritz, 
the mountaineer guide who led Hen to the remains. On a separate climb, he was killed in an avalanche. He was the only member of his party to die. Death number three was natural. The photographer of the excavation died from a brain tumor. Death number four was Elmut Simon, the man who discovered Utsi. He'd gone missing in 2004 and, after a week, he was found in a creek where he'd landed after plummeting 300 feet off a cliff. Death number 5 was a man on Simon's rescue team, who passed away only an hour after his funeral. Death number 6 was Conrad Spindler, a lead expert on the Iceman, who passed away from a chronic condition of ALS, and the last death was Tom Loy, a scientist who examined the Iceman's clothing and weapons. He passed away naturally as well, from a hereditary blood disease. After that, the curse seemed to have run its course, that is, until the Iceman cometh. Number 1 of Froth holds an innocent title, The Maiden. You may be thinking, well, that's not so scary, but think again. This Incan mummy is the thing nightmares are made of. The well-preserved mummy was found alongside two young child mummies, 22,000 feet above sea level, on the slopes of a volcano. Although it was 1999, nearly 500 years after she died, the maiden still had lice in her hair. All three were preserved in the icy mountain, completely ready to rise from the dead. Johann Reinhard, an American archaeologist and member of the expedition that discovered the three mummies, said, The doctors have been shaking their heads and saying they sure don't look 500 years old, but as if they died a few weeks ago, and a chill went down my spine the first time I saw her hands because they look like those of a person who is alive. The history of this poor maiden and is devastating enough to make you sympathetic to her plight. Even if she's a bit of a Frankenstein monster, she was likely suffering from tuberculosis or a similar bacterial infection when her people decided it was best to sacrifice her to the Yoya Yeco volcano in Argentina. How do archaeologists know this? They swabbed the ancient patient's lips and compared it to living pathogens. One of the archaeologists, Korthels, said of the method, Our technique opens a new door to solving some of history's biggest mysteries. It will also enhance our understanding of our future greatest threats, such as the emergence of new infectious agents or re-emergence of known infectious diseases. Amongst the bodies was a grand collection of silver and gold, textiles, statues, pots with food in them, and a feathered headdress, suggesting that the trio were sacrificed not to appease the gods, but to enter the realm of the gods and live in paradise alongside them, despite being killed before their time. The three sacrificed mummies are now presumably enjoying an afterlife that's markedly better than the disease-infested life they experienced on Earth. Here's hoping anyway.